What's going on out there in snowy East Coast? What's going on, Herb? How you been, buddy? It's Dude. going great here. It sucks with the weather, but we're getting by pretty good, man. Well, are you guys all snowed in? Give it. Go ahead and give us a little bit of a weather report uh, real quick for those of us on the West Coast that uh, don't know. Snow fucking sucks <laughs> and don't know how to drive in it, dude. <laughs> all year long nobody knows how to drive in it i teach people how to drive for a living and they don't know how to drive i don't get it they don't want to slow down they don't want to do nothing but it's beautiful out there the super bowl is this weekend how are you doing my friend it's been a while since i seen you it was great to meet you at the pot fest this year man yep uh yeah i got to go to the boston freedom rally back in september and uh, was able to hook up with John uh, there with the Freedom Rally, along with uh, Dave Tree and many other freedom fighters that were uh, out there in such a great event. Dude, we've been doing great. We've had a great year. We got to legalize weed here in Oregon in November, and that has just been an exciting high. We're still high on that, although we've got a lot of work to do. You know, a lot of the suits out here, John, are pissed off at us because uh, they look at it as, uh, you know, a bunch of hippies getting their uh, their plant, and we can't have that. And so uh, they're trying to take us down, dude. But, you know, we're fighting. We're keeping on going, and uh, we're going to keep uh, keep the struggle uh Definitely, and we're going to win this thing. So uh, real quick, in Boston, man, uh, how does it feel there? How, how, how is the the weed uh, going? Are you guys having any kind of uh, promising leads for anything? Have you heard any news? They're getting, they're getting their licenses now. So, I mean, it's it's any time. They're, they're stalling. They, they don't want it, just like the people are mad out there that don't want it. And we're going to get it. It's going to be legal here. They're, they're going to push for full legalization in 2016 in Massachusetts. Very you know, cool. I support my friends in Mass, Mass Can, Normal. Those guys are fantastic. You know, we have New Hampshire Normal here. They're pushed. We've got the medical now. We want it. We want it legal. There's no reason that adults should should be penalized for, for, for smoking marijuana. It's just not right. And that's exactly Plain and right. People right. need it. People like it. It's better than drinking, though. I'm drinking myself. <laughs> you know, we gotta. No, we. It, 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 we're all adults here. You know, I hate to sound cliche, but we're all adults here. Let's let's treat it like we're adults. That's exactly right. That's well exactly. said, brother. Well said. All right. Well, let's get to some of this music real quick. We got some <laughs> listeners uh, listening right now who uh, didn't get to hear some of our interviews with you last year, and uh, you guys released Mary Mac. Am I correct in saying that you guys released that in November? It can't, we did it on Halloween, ironically, like we did Dreamscapes from Dead Space, you know, in 2012. Um, it's a digital release right now. Um, CD Baby is going to be selling it by the end of the month, so you're going to be able to go online and actually order a physical copy of it with the artwork and everything. And we're planning a vinyl release Very sometime cool. around April. It's already out now, being processed and packaged and put together. So. As soon as we get those back, we're going to be in a rush to get this done. We want to do a proper release for the show. We want to perform the album as a whole as it's intended to be. And, you know, we've gotten such a warm response with this record. We, we really want people to be able to own it instead of just being able to, you know, hear a YouTube clip or see a video of us playing a song live. We want them to be able to own it and enjoy it as much as we have. You know, it's been a long time coming. Well, yeah, this album was uh, well received. You know, you guys definitely like. Uh, I know one of my favorite sites, Doomed and Stones. Uh, shout out Billy Goat. You know, they listed you guys at number eleven on the top albums of the year. I'm I'm pretty sure the Sludge Lord had you guys up there. Uh, we've been talking about it. The only reason you guys didn't make the 420 is because I had already had it done, and I wasn't willing to take any of those bands off because uh, I go to Alabama during uh, the, the break, and I had to get mine done. But this is it's just been a well-received album. Did that surprise you? Were you, were you guys uh, expecting that, or did that kind of come as a, as a warm surprise? Um, it was... We hoped we would get a louder response considering how well we did with the last record, but this has gone beyond. It's humbling, you know, to hear people put, putting our name beside a list with their favorite bands like Yob and, you know, and 
pallbearer and things like that. To see your name listed like that, and you're, you're not on a major label, you're playing a couple of shows here and there, and people are comparing you to your favorite bands. It's it, it's an amazing feeling. We, we're really, really thankful that it's been received as well as it has. Well, it ended up being uh, eight tunes. Uh, a lot of these tunes are just they're they're just full. They're 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 long. You know, eight minutes and nine minutes and uh, seven minutes. Uh, I think in the beginning, this album was intended to be one continuous tune. Uh, talk about the you know the 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 migration and the of of the album and how this uh, all came about. Well, the record itself was written originally by Dave and. Greg and Phil, before I joined Ichabod, oh. before Jay joined Ichabod, um, they released two albums in between when they originally recorded this, the basic tracks for, that, for this record. And I stepped in, and I had to basically come up with the way it was going to flow. They had an idea for the, the order of the way the songs went, I had to come up with my ideas for to complement that. The album's based on our hometown, our region, the Merrimack River. It, it, it starts off calm, and then it gets really rough, and then it calms down again, and you have the, the, the twists and turns that you'd find when you were, you know, going in a canoe down a river, a canoe and stew if you want to, you know? Um, it, it, it's It's been something that challenged me as a musician. I... I listen to it now with fresh ears every time, and I'm, I'm completely astonished at what I was apprehensive about before I'm now finding is my favorite parts of this record. And we, we hope that when people listen to it that they're in for the long haul. It's 48 minutes, and it doesn't pause. There's no lull in, the, it, lull in it. There's always something to hear. You know, Put it on headphones. You'll hear all the crazy stuff Dave is doing. And all the stuff that we've added in at the after and in, in post production, you know, and you know, we're excited. We hope that this record's going to open more people's eyes to what we do, and it's going to bring us, you know, to a broader audience because you know we do this. We love the music, but we want people to love it as much as we love it. Yeah, no, it's true, man. This album, and uh, I do, I have listened to it. I, uh, that's how I listen to it is uh, through the headphones, and it's like. You know, it's like one of those movies that you get entranced with and, you know, you watch it 20 times and each time you, f you find something different in that movie. Well, these tunes, man, I mean, you can listen to them and uh, each time you come back and listen to the album, you, you find a different part or a different, because there's so many, it's a journey, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the rear, you can feel the ups and downs and the, you can almost feel the weather, the change in the weather and just the, the wind and the storms and just all this put together in one uh, complete album and uh, so it's great uh, tell everyone how they could uh, listen to it and uh, check it out um, if you go to our band camp site um, actually let me just uh, type it in real quick and I'll and I'll tell you what it is in a second uh, it's Bandcamp Ichabod 2012 uh, or if you just search Ichabod on Bandcamp it will come up we have six records they're all there up on there you know we I, I I want you to listen to all of them. I, Ken, who was their former singer, is a great friend of mine, and he's still family as far as Ichabod is concerned, and those records stand up on their own. It's a little different, mm -hmm. but it, 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 it's awesome. I, I hope everybody checks out everything that Ichabod's ever recorded. Well, uh, what is the, the plans for 2015 in, in Ichabod? Do you guys, you know, are you guys... What is the status, right? You know, where are we? Are we a band? Uh, oh, absolutely. We are going into back into the studio again. We're going to work with Glenn Smith at Amps and Ohms Studios out in Cambridge. Um, he's recorded with Daryl Shepard, who is in Milligram, Black Wolf Goat, and a bunch of uh, Black Pyramid, you know, the... the this guy's he knows everybody. He's he's recorded with everyone. Jim Healy from Black Tie is in there mm -hmm. right now recording his his music. And we're going back in in March. We got four songs that are eighty percent done. I'm gonna go in and put the vocals on. Dave's gonna come in on the second day and he's gonna put him down his guitar tracks. And we're gonna have a brand new EP ready to go for the summertime. That's no delay, no off putting. We've got the 
artwork already done. The label's already done. It's all ready to go. The music just needs to be mixed and mastered. And you're going to have another Ichabod record by the time the summer hits. That is outstanding, man. That's just big time stuff. Because, you know, that mean, that makes me want to just go ahead and throw away that freaking interview we did like a year ago where you guys were talking some shit about uh, maybe uh, not becoming a band anymore or not kind of playing anymore. I think I'm just going to go and delete that whole freaking interview, man. This is great news. <laughs> We do have, I mean, we are, we do have one little, little, you know, speed bump in the road. Our guitar player, Jay, is actually moving to California in April. Ah. But I figured that that gives us a reason to get out on your side of the state. There you go. Was because Jay's going to be living out there. Now you're cooking with butter, dude. That's awesome stuff right there. We'd love to have some Ichabod out here on the West Coast and uh, rocking. Uh, that'd be great, dude. Uh, a lot of lot of great bands uh, maybe could uh, put you up. I know you guys uh, communicate with a lot of them, and you have a great community and uh, things going on. All right, man. I saw where you guys played an acoustic show here recently. How how was how was that, dude? And uh, you know, do did that kind of go off uh, like you planned? I think we've got a connection problem with the uh, Skype at this moment. It oh, says it's trying John? to get him back, but I think we've lost him at this point. All right, well, we'll, all right, we'll uh, set this back up again. Herb Thrasher here, hanging out with Radical Russ, and uh, we've been talking with John Fadden of Ichabod, and uh, they had a great, an outstanding release in 2014, Mary Mac, and uh, it's just a long album, and... Uh, Eight tunes. Uh, the tune that we played was the seventh tune a while ago, and that was the ballad of Hannah Dustin. And uh, like a lot of, like I mentioned, you know, it has so much influence. There's a lot of doom in there. It's, it's power. Uh, they're definitely metal, and uh, they combine it all. Uh, John uh, has so many different uh, influences. He comes from many backgrounds. Even uh, you know southern rock. John plays in a. He sings in a kind of like a, a southern rock offside band, and and so just having all these influences. And uh, Ichabod uh, Phil, who is the bass player in Ichabod, uh, he, he's played in so many bands. Opened up for freaking Metallica in the eighties. So they they, they they just been around. You know they've been very uh, in the scene. And uh, John, do we we still have you back on the line? Nope, still trying to reach him. All right, still trying to reach John. So, but uh, great stuff. And John also a uh, big sports guy and knows what's up. And so, hopefully, we're going to get him back. And uh, I'd love to get his thoughts. And uh, if nothing else, Russ, get his thoughts on uh, this freaking. Uh, John, do we have you back on the line? I'm back, man. I'm here, man. I, I, right. I'm sorry about that. My phone reset. I don't know why. It's plugged in and everything. That's all yeah. right, man. Good stuff. Glad to have you back. Uh, speaking with John Fadden of Ichabod, and uh, I think I left off uh, wondering about the acoustic show you guys played. Uh, that had to be a little bit different. Uh, how, how, what were your feelings on that, and how did that go? Go. Mm. Yeah, we're not hearing him. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna have to uh, somehow. Get, yeah, we're not. Uh, we're not. We're not hearing you on our side for some. Yeah, we're reason. not hearing you on our side, John. Our side, John. You're not hearing me now. Yeah. There That's you go. Better. Go. There we go. There, there you go. go. All right. Talk about that acoustic show that you guys did. did you drink more beer than you played, or did you guys actually play? Oh no, we played. We actually we did two sets. We did ten songs. Um, a couple of songs from Merrimack. We played a couple of songs that. No one's really had a chance to hear before, so some of the songs that are going to be on the next record, and you know, we 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 got such a great response from it. You know, we have people that came to see us, our fans that came out in a in a snowstorm that came to see us play at at a brewery that you know we were no microphones, no PA setup, nothing. It was it was acoustic guitars. Phil had a, a suitcase that we bought at the Salvation Army as a kick drum. <laughs> so we had we basically got up set up and we ripped through we ripped through two sets and and our fans were like man you guys should do a record like this you guys should do this aside wow. from doing live electric it was great we, very we, it was, cool it was really, really surprising 
Well, you guys can go to uh, Ichabod's Facebook page, and they have posted a link uh, to some of those uh, tunes, and you guys can check out that show that was at a brewery. And uh, so, real cool. All right, John, we got a big, uh, important game coming up uh, this uh, weekend. And uh, before we uh, even get to kind of talking about the game, Russ, didn't we have a story coming out with uh, Garrett Blunt? Yeah, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers running back, Garrett Blunt. Yeah, his name's really Blunt. And he went to the University of Oregon. That's strike two. <laughs> he was busted for marijuana. Uh, the charges have been dropped. All is well in Garrett Blunt's world. So... Uh, there's there's one. So he's good to go. The charges dropped. He yeah. gets a little bit of uh, community service. But on the other hand, you got the Cleveland Browns wide receiver, Josh Gordon, who was the number one receiver in 2013, even though he sat out two games for codeine. Then he got suspended the entire season for marijuana. That was reduced to 10 games. He came back, didn't do so well in the NFL. Now he has busted a third time. He's got the hat trick, this time for alcohol. Now, if you didn't think you could get a, a, a NFL suspension for alcohol, apparently you can because he had been involved in a DUI uh, accident and part of his plea was alcohol monitoring and he failed an alcohol test. He could be out the entire next season. Wow. Wow. Well, at least uh, right now, time being, uh, Super Bowl Sunday's coming up. We've got the New England, New England Patriots against the Seattle Seahawks. So, John, you got your running back. You don't have to worry about any pot charges. Uh, we still have to worry about Deflate Gate. But uh, besides that, uh, how are you feeling about this game this weekend, dude? I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to admit it. If the Patriots were not playing in this game, I would be Seattle all day. I love that team. Russell Wilson is a classic. You know, Richard Sherman. I love that man. I think that I think that team is so well put together that any other team but the Patriots, that would be my team. I would root those guys all day. But y'all gonna lose to the New England Patriots on Super Bowl Sunday. That's just how it's going. To be. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. That's classic. Well, we'll see, man. Uh, it's going to be an important game. I mean, you know, we've got Brady who could, what, get his, what, fourth or fifth Super Bowl ring. What is it? Is is it fifth? It would be his sixth Super Bowl that he's in would be his third victor, his fourth no, his victor. fourth. His fourth if ring. Yeah, are you guys all fired up on uh, on Brady still, man? Or is, is he, like, still the man there? Yeah, John, we're just having a hard time hearing you, dude. Deflate, sorry, man. Deflate gate was a distraction. That's all it is. That's all it is, right? You guys aren't really cheating over there, are you? No, are you? I don't know, man. I'm not there. In the, I'm not there in the <laughs> locker room. I'm just. I, all I know is that if the league had something on the Patriots, they should either come out and say that we will address the problem after the game, or if they don't, which which it seems like they don't. Come out and apologize to the Patriots. This has been this has been a disaster. Goodell needs to step down. This is this is two strikes in a year and two big strikes. I mean, he lets Ray Rice off, you know, until until we all see the video, you know. He, this and now this and they're not. If they don't have proof, then 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 say you don't have proof and let's move on and let's have a great game. Let's not make these guys feel bad. Let's not have a bunch of haters talking about a team when they when they don't know what they're talking about you know the only people that know if that really happened are the person who did it and then obviously nobody else because nobody saw anybody do anything that is a good so, point i mean good, why I is mean, the nfl dragging their feet they know they know what the hell's going on they, they they have to know i mean what what russ what what the hell do they need to investigate for weeks you know, it's uh, what they the latest thing that I've heard is that the uh, there was no determination of what the pounds per square inch were in the balls before. So they didn't really have a baseline. It's not like before they all measured and made sure they're all at twelve point five. And then once they measured after and eleven of them were below the limit. Well, they don't know that they started at twelve point five. They made a start. They might have started a little low. So we don't know if. If they started a little low and then they got a little lower, that could be atmospheric. If they started really high and they got a little lower, that could be tampering. 
Then you got the video of the ball boy taking the balls into the other room, but it's only like 90 seconds, right? He, to deflate 11 balls in 90 seconds, you know those little needles and stuff? I don't know if you could do that. And, you know, it, it seems weird. The thing, that, the thing that sticks out to me, though, is that guy that did the statistical comparison that showed that since 2007, when Brady and Peyton Manning lobbied to get that rule change that the road team could take their own balls to the game, the Patriots fumble per touch percentage just went through the floor. They just became the least fumbling team in the NFL. It was just by a wide margin. That seems a little odd to me, but otherwise, yeah, it's like a whole bunch about nothing. I mean, come on. They they won their game 45 to 7. What if like Saturday Night Live said, what? It might have been 38 to 7 if the ball had been inflated properly. Come yeah, on now. Exactly. So John, how's this game stack up, man? How how do, how do these two teams uh, stack up with each other? Are you expecting a blowout or one of these uh 24 23 games it's not going to be a blowout guys i want it to be i want the patriots to prove a point you know people want to complain about running up the score i want the patriots to drop 100 points on this guy on these <laughs> okay i want i want people to be so angry at how many points they scored that that, that they just are blind with rage but that's not going to happen these are two teams that their defenses know how to stop people from scoring points. Okay? Indianapolis that. put up only put up seven points. Andrew Luck's a fantastic quarterback. He's probably right there, right below Manning and right below Brady. And probably Aaron Rodgers too. But, you know, and Seattle is not going to let what happened to them in Green Bay happen again. Yeah. You know, that was embarrassing. Yeah. They they I had faith in them the whole time. I'm not going to lie. As soon as they scored that last touchdown at the end of the game, that first one in the 44 seconds, I stood up and said, this game is over. Green Bay is done. Sorry, Russ. I Green know. Bay is all I, done. He I knew it too, John. He knew it too. <laughs> you know, but th this is going to be a low-scoring game for both teams. This is going to come down to defense. Can Russell Wilson score on Darrell Revis? Can he stop Jamie Collins? You know, can he get outside the pocket? It, and then, then it's going to be, can Richard Sherman and Earl Thomas stop the passing attack of Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, Edelman, Amendola, Vereen? And then on top of that, you've got to stop Ridley. you got to stop. You know, you've got to just have, you've got to have a team. I don't think Seattle can do it. New England has too many weapons this year. I could be wrong. This could be the Giants in 07 all over again and pull it off, but I don't think so. This is going to be number four for Bill and Tom, and then this is going to be Brady being the best quarterback that has ever played the game, and it's not going to be up for debate anymore. I got to admit that, uh, you uh, know, yeah, you're definitely right about Brady. I mean, he you can't argue and if he wins this one, I mean, he will definitely uh it'll it'll be it'll be, definitely be his name will be mentioned. But I got to admit, dude, that if LeGarrett Blunt runs like he did against the Indianapolis Colts in that game, man, it's going to be hard for the Seahawks to to beat the Patriots because if he's getting 8, 9, 10 yards a carry, and then Brady is able to just start throwing. I mean, I, I don't see how I, – I don't know. It's just going to be tough. But if, if if Blunt and Ridley can't really get the running going, I, I think Seattle can score more points than, than Brady's two or three touchdowns. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. So uh, – well, what about the Patriots punter? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, uh, all right, man. Well, it's definitely going to be a big game. Uh, do you have a score that you're that you're looking at? They're thinking about. Seventeen seven Patriots. Tom Brady MVP. Seventeen seven Patriots. Tom Brady MVP. Wow. So then you. Kind of thinking Brady's gonna kind of win it there towards the end. So maybe at halftime it's seven to seven, and then Brady comes out in the second half and just kind of really takes control of the game. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. 
It's in uh, indoors. It's in uh, where is it? In Arizona. Yep. yep. Arizona. In the giant toaster. They have played out there before too. I'm, I'm pretty sure they played in the Super Bowl out there. So. Uh, yeah, I think that was. Um, I think that was. Um, yeah, I can't remember, but I know that they played out there in that stadium. Yep. Brady, uh, you know, he'll he'll definitely remember uh, going in there for sure. All right, well, there you go. Good stuff right there. Uh, really looking forward to the Super Bowl. Do you have a big party planned? Are you going to kind of hang out and just watch it, or you, you got a big party planned? Yeah. We're going to have a couple drinks, and, you know, we do shots at Patriot schools, so probably not going to be able to go to that. <laughs> All right. Well, he's John Fadden. Uh, the guy's uh, got a big year coming up. Ichabod, uh, 2015, really looking forward. Uh, they're going to have uh, four new tunes that they're going to be putting out by the summertime. Uh, really looking forward to uh, some of the gigs they're going to be playing this year. Uh, John Merrimack was just an outstanding album, dude. You guys need to know that uh, a lot in the in the stoner uh, rock, stoner doom, uh, metal community uh, who have heard it, uh, Love it. Uh, we're going to continue uh, playing it and supporting it right here on 420 Radio. In fact, we're about to go into Life at the Loom. It's another great track. It's the track five off the eight track album. And uh, John, really appreciate your time. Appreciate uh, everything. You guys uh, stay out of the snow and uh, keep Ichabod rocking, dude. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Ross. Have a great night, you guys. Take it Go easy. Patriots. That's right, man. Good luck uh, to the Patriots, dude. And uh, we'll be seeing you out there in uh, Facebook land. All right, here's Ichabod, dude. Turn